what a week it has been in Regina, where the Rough Riders are under fire, feeling the heat and steam all at the same time. The CFL's flagship franchise got pinched for ratio violations two weeks ago, but then last week they were found, according to a league statement, to be in violation of policies which prohibit practicing with ineligible players, players participating in practice who are on the six-game injured list and having free agents practice with players who are under contact. The riders were fined $60,000 and had their 2016 salary cap reduced by $26,000. Basically, they got caught doing what everyone has to do in the CFL where rosters are small and injuries make them even smaller. They were just too cavalier about it and got caught. So all they had to do was pay the fine, apologize and move on. But new to do. Riders general manager and head coach Chris Jones decided to go with the ignorance defense, saying what his team did had been done at each of his CFL stops for the past 14 years. While that is likely true, it is no justification. What's that, officer? I can't just take this $4,000 ring out of the store without paying for it. I had no idea. A GM's job is to know the rules and use them accordingly. Pleading ignorance suggests Jones is a great coach and a lousy general manager. Then he didn't answer any questions from the media about his significant indiscretions that, according to CFL Commissioner Jeffrey A. Reed, compromised the integrity of the league. Jones then doubled down during the post-game handshake, telling Stampeders head coach Dave Dickinson, according to the Calgary Suns Scott Mitchell, to win with some class. To what Jones was referring to specifically is unknown, but it capped an impressive week of surprising indignation from a riders organization headed for a dead last finish for the second straight season. Opinions at plenty the Saskatchewan situation led to some disparate, yet passionate reactions in the media. Graham Kelly of the Medicine Hat News, who has been covering the league for 44 years and was inducted into the Canadian Football Hall of Fame media wing in 2002, wrote Tuesday that Jones should be fired. I've done a lot of research over the years into the ingredients of championship teams, Kelly wrote. Whether it be Hugh Camels Eskimos, Ken Preston's Rough Riders, the Rogers LeHugh, Wally Buono, John Huff Knuckle Stampeders. The Boo Ono slash Bob Ackles Lions, the Bud Grant slash Cal Murphy Blue Bombers or Ralph Sop CO's great teams in Hamilton and Toronto, the common threads are honesty and integrity on and off the field and in the front office. I've known all those men well and can vouch for their good character. The Rough Riders do not possess such qualities. Hubris and Chris Jones have brought them to the sorry password, after a thorough investigation. The CFL has fined them $60,000, the most severe penalty in league history. On the other side of the coin, Riders Radio play-by-play -play man Rob Peterson went on a long and rambling rant on his blog, rodpeterson.com, accusing the league and its commissioner of having an anti-Rough Rider bias and for being on a witch hunt against the organization. What really irked Peterson was a Riggs comment in the league's press release about how the writers had compromised the league's integrity. The same one to six Saskatchewan Rough Riders who are currently leading the league in attendance, Pedersen wrote. The Golden Goose. The CFL has a problem all right, but it definitely ain't us. It's getting good, and the season isn't even half over yet. Just feels right the Canadian Football Hall of Fame game and induction ceremony will take place next month where it should always take place, Hamilton's Tim Hortons Field. The league announced the news on Tuesday that it had headed back to the hammer. The Hall of Fame has always been in Steel Town, and next year it will become a permanent fixture at THF after it became unfeasible in its own building in downtown Hamilton. The league moved the game around the country over the last eight years, but it's great to see it going back to where it belongs. CFL great Doug Brown, Rodney Harding, Daryl McKee Mitchell and James West, and builder Don McDonald will be inducted on September 15th and then honored the next day during Hamilton's game against Montreal. Nobody asked Henry, but has anyone figured out who, specifically, made Henry Burris mad? Is this one of those instances where Smile and Hank's best friend's girlfriend's cousin's sister who knows that guy who goes with that girl said something bad about his quarterbacking skills? Is it just me or does there seem to be a penalty or a challenge result every week that no one understands? It would be great if the CFL could shed a little light on one or two calls every week. If they screwed up, 
so be it. At least fans would have a better understanding of what's being called and why is Brandon Banks the most dangerous players in the CFL? Yes. Yes, he is. He might be in the running for most outstanding player if he keeps returning kicks for touchdowns at a ridiculous pace. Here's hoping Duran Carter gets to play this week against the Red Blacks. He doesn't deserve to be suspended for bumping into Ottawa head coach Rick Campbell more than a month ago. It's too bad Eric Rogers, the CFL star receiver last season for the Stampeders, suffered an ACL tear during San Francisco 49ers practice last week. The CFL whiffed once. Again in sending a message to defenders that you can't try to name quarterbacks. Red Blacks middle linebacker Amaso Munoz received only a fine for delivering a hard hit to Mike Riley's head two weeks ago. The insiders say CFL coaches and managers give their anonymous thoughts on what they're talking about behind closed doors. I looked at Montreal's schedule today. They could be eliminated from the playoffs by week 12 or 13. Matt Dunigan should do more games for TSN. He's their best one. The Stampeders are not the most talented, but they're a veteran group that is well coached. They do have the best QB in the game right now. He doesn't get hit. He's super tough, aggressive and an accurate passer. There are reasons why Simone Lawrence numbers have dipped a bit. Teams are running more plays to put him in motion, and others are rallying to the ball. He's played a lot of football the last two years, and their new middle linebacker, Larry Dean, is a solid addition. I wish Zach Colorose wasn't playing until September. With him, they scare the bleep out of me if Edmonton beats Toronto this week. I'm going to predict this happens. Calgary and BC will finish 1-2 in the West. Winnipeg and Edmonton will go 9-9 or better, and both make the playoffs. One of them will cross over to the East in the playoffs. Ottawa is the best team over there, but either Hamilton or Toronto won't make the playoffs. The Riders lost. But Varian Durant started running the ball again. When he runs, he gives them a much better shot at winning. The Bombers are good, but they're getting help, too. They're playing better on all three sides of the ball, putting them in position to win. But part of that is thanks to the turnovers they have forced the other team's quarterbacks into one of the reasons BC is winning again is because they push the ball vertically. Big plays win football games call me a proud Canadian, but you can't win without good Canadians in our league. One of the reasons Montreal is the worst team in our league is what they've done with Canadians. They cut Jerome Nism, and they gave Mike Adam away. Both of those bleepers are good players, and they got nothing for them. It may take some time to gel, but Zach Colorose should take the Ticats into contention for the division with Ricky Ray out and Ottawa with a pending quarterback decision on the horizon. Typical TSM. Chris Jones dished that halftime interview thing and says something about the media always being negative. Glenn Suter didn't like them being criticized and said don't blame the media. Jock Climey and Milk Steeball went after Jones, too. All those TSN talkers criticize decisions we make every week as coaches, but they sure have thin skin when they get it back from us. That's bleak if more than Matt Nichols playing good. Richie Hull has his guys playing good football on defense. They're creating turnovers and giving their offense field position the most underrated receiver in the league this season. Mark Wanima, Daniel Dish all the little things right. He blocks, he runs all his routes cleanly and plays as hard as any receiver in the CFL. Notman Rosa Belt and Brian Burnham are right in the mix for that title as well. I enjoyed coaching Kevin Glenn, but it's time. Jim Pop, or the next coach, if he gets fired or hires someone else. Needs to play his young quarterbacks. Hamilton has better players than us, but they can't punt work. They bleep and they struggle in their secondary. No excuse for them having a losing record, though. That's a talented football team. The jury's still out on the Bombers. They were handed two games by Hamilton, but their defense has been lights out with turnovers and in turn given their offense short fields. However, if that trend continues its championship DNA, Nichols is better than Drew Willie which helps immensely all the attention is going to Manny Arsenault, but quietly Ryan Burnham is putting together a very nice season. Pengton's prediction the Bombers are going to continue their winning ways. Already victorious in three straight, their next three games are against the league's two weak links, the Adelets and Rough Riders Labor Day Classic and Banjo Bowl. That gives them the glorious opportunity to win six in a row. Tweet of the week these fines are getting out of hand, there's no consistency. No clear clarification.
and the picking slash choosing of certain players is unfair. Lion C.B. Rodney Hill, who appears to have been fined for a uniform issue these fines are getting out of hand. There's no consistency, no clear clarification, and the picking slash choosing of certain players is unfair. Ronnie Yell at underscore dot below August 16, 2016 by the number 184, special teams tackles for Lions Pounds Jason Arakagi, tied with Wade Miller for most in CFL history 66-17, to 17, margin by which the Adults have been outscored in the fourth quarter this season 3-0, Bombers record against backup quarterbacks. This season 1-4. Bombers record against starting quarterbacks this season boss blunder even if to Cats quarterback Zach Colorose decided all by himself to heave a deep ball into massive coverage on third and five late in Saturday's game against the Lions, his coaches should have warned him to be smarter. It happens way too often at the end of games as trailing teams are marching towards dying or winning the contest, going for the gusto when a first down will do. The Ticats were down 7 and facing 3rd and 5 from the Lions 36 and still had 31 seconds on the clock. Instead of worrying about the first down, however, Colorose fired a pass into the end zone. There were 4 Lions defenders against 2 Ticats receivers, and the ball didn't come close to being completed. Smooth move the Lions put together an excellent game plan against the Tiger Cats on Saturday night at BC Place. Specifically. Their decision to go with a hurry-up defense worked wonders. The Tiger Cats are notoriously slow starters. They have now been outscored 129-53 in the first half this season, and they were starting the game at 10 o'clock EDT, which has killed many an East Division team that has traveled to the left coast. Offensive coordinator Curry Jones had young quarterback Jonathan Jennings running the plays quickly, and it helped the Leos jump out to a 32-12 lead. It was an advantage that paid off later in the game when the Ticats stormed back to make it 38-38 before ultimately falling 45-38. Power Rankings 1. 1 Calgary The train keeps rolling in Cowtown, where Bowley by Mitchell is ruling like a boss both on and off the field. 2. 2 BC. The Leos almost blew it at home against the Tiger Cats on Saturday night. But they won, and that's all that matters. 3. 3 Ottawa The Red Blacks enjoyed the bye and still had a great week in the East thanks to Argos, T-Cats and Alouette's losses. 4. 6 Winnipeg The Blue and Gold are getting it done with turnovers, scoring a whopping 71 of their 199 points, or 36%, off gifts. 5. For Hamilton Now that Zach Colorose is back, the T-Cats are about to be back to where they should be, at or near the top of the East. 6. 7 Edmonton The Skies should have throttled the Adelettes, but turnovers made it close. The defense might be starting to come around. 7. 5 Toronto The Boatmen are beat up, and backup quarterback Logan Kilgore is giving away footballs like it's candy at a parade. 8. 8 Montreal The Adelettes deserve some credit for putting up the fight at Commonwealth Field last week, but they're just not good enough. 9. 9 Saskatchewan Darian Durant needs to get it together and win a game for his team. Until that happens, the Riders are headed for another 3-15 season. The week ahead Montreal at Ottawa negative 9 Friday, 7 p.m. EDT The Red Blacks are a pedestrian 1-1-1 at home, but the Alouettes will be just what the doctor ordered. Red Blacks by 18. Calgary at BC negative 3 Friday. 10 p.m. EDT This clash of the Titans at BC Place should be excellent viewing and give the winner a nice jump in the race for first place. Lions by 3. Edmonton at Toronto, Saturday, 4 p.m. EDT The Esks got off the schneid last week and aren't showing signs of life. The Boatmen struggle at home, too. Eskimos by 6. Saskatchewan at Hamilton, Saturday, 7 p.m. EDT The Tabbies are 0-2 at home and the Russies are 0-3 on the road. Something will give big time. T-Cats by 14. Last week, 4-0 overall, 15-17.